Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Alex and this is The Car Creative. Today in this video, I want to do an edit breakdown of my latest film on the 2020 Tacoma. If you haven't seen it yet, I will link it in the description below. But I do want to show you guys from start to finish the process of my filming, my editing, the music that I use, the color grading that I do, some of the effects that I put on. And what's really going to be cool about this video is that whether you use Final Cut Pro or maybe you're a Premiere user, is that it's actually still going to be relevant for you no matter what because I'm going to talk about more concepts than I am about like plugins or specific things to an editor. So that's really fun. And if you guys are already a pro user, I still think there's some things you can maybe glean from this. So stick around. And if you're brand new, you're definitely going to learn a few things as well. So the first thing I want to talk about is the gear that I used to film this with. I intended to go out and just do a vlog. I wasn't intending to make an actual cinematic video out of it. So I just brought my Sony a7 III, the 24 to 105 Sony uh, with an f-stop before, good for vlogging, yada, yada, yada. I also brought the GoPro Hero 7, which is obviously just a good old action cam that I was gonna use to rig to the car, which you'll see in the side here. And then the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, which is a beast of a drone. So if you're looking for drones, this is it. Although the Mavic Air 2 seems like it's a decent competitor. Either way, love this gear. This is all I use to shoot. And the last video I did was on how to actually get proper video exposure. So check it out in the link here or when you're done, go check it out in the link below. Um, this is really essential for when you're making high quality video is to actually make sure you're capturing your video well without blowing out your highlights or making sure that you're still retaining the shadows properly. So go check out that video because that's how I capture all this footage. So it was interesting when I uploaded the footage into Final Cut Pro, the image that caught my eye the most was this shot here. We had mounted the GoPro onto the front of my Tacoma and after we had done some donuts we were just chatting but I noticed that the wind just kept blowing by there's these two clips this one here and then this one here of the truck shooting dust so I knew that this would make for a pretty creative edit if I wanted to. So the most important thing to almost any cool cinematic video is going to be the music. It's going to dictate how you cut your footage, lay it over top of the music, and it's going to dictate the tempo and pace. So I found a really cool track on the music bed. That's one of the online platforms you can use to download your music. There's also Artlist and Epidemic Sound that are really good for YouTubers for subscription rates and stuff so you can get really good music. I choose the music bed. I just find it to be the most cinematic, the most user friendly, and I've just been using it for a really long time. I also use Artlist. Now, none of this is sponsored, so um, yeah, but you can still just go check it all out. They're really, really cool. So I found this great track by a guy named Ryan Talbert, super cinematic track. So playing through it, Real quick, you can kind of see how the music is gonna dictate when I hit my cuts. As well, there was a couple lulls in the edit, so I wanted to add my own kind of glitches, which we'll get into with the sound effects and how I kind of edit those glitches into the video. So there's a bit of space here with the track. It's a bit more uh, symphonic and light, but there's a hit coming, which is gonna dictate when my first shot comes in. So I wanted to make an impact, make the very beginning of the video kind of hit you hard. And then it goes into, again, like a bit of a symphonic low bit. So I was like, oh, how am I gonna make the edit exciting and keep your attention after the hit? So this is where I did some glitches here. You can see where I kind of shoot back and forth. I'm kind of trying to foreshadow some of the shots that you're gonna see, but also kind of keep you entertained. So let me just show you really quickly how I did those cut-ins. So I created a, a quick compound clip on this one because I wanted to add a glitch sound effect, but also kind of make it glitch in and out. So if I click into that, click on here, I hit Control V, this is gonna bring up my opacity meter. So you can see here, I just kind of click up and down, up and down, up and down, and that's gonna give us this little glitch effect. So I'm just bringing the opacity from zero back up to 100, zero, 100, and that's how I'm getting a real quick glitch effect. And if you hear this here, really, really quick zzz, glitchy thing. I use a lot of lens distortion effects in this video. It's not sponsored by them in any way, but I do fully support and back their products. They're incredible. They're crazy expensive, so I'm sorry, but you can definitely find alternatives on the internet. You can see that this is what the lens flare looks like when you drop it in. So you need to come up and change your blend mode to screen. You can see what it looks like here normally if the opacity is full. 
it doesn't really do much, doesn't look good. Um, so we're gonna hit screen and what that does is it takes away the black parts of the image and only gives you the highlight parts. So I wanted this to be pretty subtle here, but you can see that it just adds a nice little lens flare. So you can see I use these kind of all over the place, use a little light hit here as well. Use a, this one was called a legacy light hit. You can see what it looks like here. Without this, it's fine. It's linear, it looks fine. But you add that light hit, it just adds that next level. Here as well, this is just the headlight turning on. Add the little lens flare there. And this is something you have to think of when you're in the recording process, is that when I wanted these lights to turn on, I also wanted the sound effect of the car turning on. So I recorded this completely separately. I was just pointing at the exhaust tip of the car, asked Spencer to turn on his truck, and bam, you get that sound effect of the car turning on. You hear that? There you go. And you can hear really subtly here as well when that light comes on. Ooh, that's kind of fun. You hear that high pitched squeal? I'm trying to like give it that electronic sound of it coming on. So all together this little section sounds like all super subtle. So with that high pitch ring, you can see that I added all kinds of sound effects in here. Again, these are mostly lens distortions, but you can also find a decent library in Final Cut Pro as well. And there's like auto SUV pass on the gravel. Oh, how convenient. That sounds kind of like this truck on the gravel, right? So you can use and incorporate these sound effects. Now a bunch of the ones that I use, again, are from Lens Distortion. You can see here that I use like a bunch of hits, a bunch of whooshes that are trying to keep you really engaged. So if I just solo those out, you can hit option S on your keyboard to solo out any clips that you want. So because this was shot on the Mavic 2, you're not gonna get any audio. So I had to add this audio to give you a sense that you were from above. So I added a subtle wind track to this to kind of give you that feel of, well, obviously the wind blowing. And then from there, the track's gonna build up and then I'm gonna hit you here. So this is all just the sound effects that I put in. Nice like subtle whoosh that I did there. So one cool effect you can do to add on to your sound effects is if it's got a bit too much of a high pitched sound or frequency, you can add what's called a low pass filter. Now most programs will have a low pass on there, but I'll show you what it sounds like without the low pass filter here. This is just like a, a neutral whoosh sound. And then you add the low pass filter. And what you can see do here is it actually just cutting out all the high frequencies. You may have heard this in some popular YouTube channels where like someone goes underwater and the music kind of like fades away. They're using a low pass filter, so they're taking out all the high frequencies so it sounds like you're kind of underwater. So that's kind of what I did with this whoosh effect here just to make it more subtle, more deep, and a bit more engaging in like the earthy grounded parts. I didn't want too much of those high frequencies. So that's why I added that onto this whoosh here. And you can see that throughout the entire thing, I'm using wind, I'm using risers to bring you into an occasion and then hitting you. Now the cool thing about this track, it's actually fairly cinematic and has some of those hits in it as well. But if you put these effects all back on, it really does help bring you into a moment. And I think it's so important if you're gonna be making epic car films to be adding effects like this. So the next thing that I wanna get into is one of my favorite things and that's color grading. I absolutely love color grading footage and I'm gonna show you how I do it. So I don't know if you guys have used adjustment layers, but this is how I'm gonna start with an overall grade. So this here adjustment layer is going over top all of my footage and what I'm doing is I'm putting a LUT on there so you can see lens distortion makes all these incredible LUTs they're called finishing LUTs the one I chose to go with is called dark monochrome so I have that going over my entire film now one thing I'm going to show you here guys that I think is going to be super helpful is how to color grade your images to look the same throughout because you've got these drone shots here that without any color grading look significantly different than the footage that's gonna come in from my GoPro or from my a7 III. They're all very different cameras, so you're gonna get a very different look from them. So if you hit Control Command 6, 
you're gonna get what's called a comparison viewer. So this was one of my key frames that I was using because I loved the sun coming in and I loved the blue tones that were coming from the dirt. So I wanted to make most of my shots match this specific one. You can go up to window, show in workspace, comparison viewer, so it shows you all those things in here as well. And then if you hit command seven, we're gonna be bringing up all of our waveforms, vector scopes, and things of that nature. So we are gonna use a bit of science here and stick with me because this will help you so much with matching your color grades between things, whether you have the comparison viewer in Final Cut or you're using in Premiere, which I don't actually know if they have the comparison viewer, look it up. If you take a look at the vector scope, you're seeing that the colors are going up towards the yellow and red. Now the LUT is gonna help by finishing kind of all those color tones and bringing them into alignment. Okay, so let's take these two shots for example. A little bit different, but I wanna match the color of the dirt and the foreground to make them the same. So you can see up in the vector scopes here where the direction of the color is going. And I guess I could have made this a little bit brighter to match this specific screen. But you can see here in my highlights that I needed to drag it up quite significantly from what it was naturally. I had to drag it up. I'm looking at the colors in my left vector scope to match the vector scope on my right. The vector scope is showing you the entire color wheel and your job is to match that. And you can do it partly by eye, but the vector scope's actually gonna give you the scientific way of saying like, yes, they're fully in line. So this is one way that I use to match all of my color grades together. And I did this over all my clips. I kind of picked a hero shot so you can see this here and then came over here to these other shots and tried to start to match them as best as I could. And here's another example of trying to match the foreground and the highlights colors. You can see here, I had to pull my highlights up a little bit to match the highlights of my initial shot. And again, using the vector scopes here, as well as the highlights in the Luma, you can see I'm trying to match where the shadows land here, as well as where the highlights land. So using an adjustment layer over your entire image is gonna help so much. And then going in and adjusting each individual clip with your shadows, your highlights. And again, I go into this a little bit in my previous video on how to get proper exposure. And then in here, we're gonna be adjusting all of our midtones highlights to match our initial shot. Another way that you can do this is you can go into your hue and saturation panels. Again, I'm not totally sure where this lands in Premiere, but I know you have all these similar tools available to you. So on this one, I'm gonna click on my orange tones here because they aren't perfectly in line with like the orange and yellows over here. And you can just drag and adjust this so that you can see your vector scopes align, but you just push them over and the yellows are doing a bit of a weird thing coming in a bit green. So I'm just gonna line those up as well to be orange. And this is such an important tool to understand guys. Even if you're shooting like people interview footage and you have two different cameras, and let's say the skin tones are coming in a bit magenta on one and a bit orange on the other. Do one really good color grade and then on your other camera, use the hue and saturation to push and pull the skin tones or like the color of your shirt back into alignment with what your A cam is supposed to be. So these tools will help you significantly to line up your cameras and make them look the same. And again, use the vector scope because that's a scientific way to ensure that the saturation is the same as well as the color tones are landing in the same place. So that was one way that I did it using adjustment layers, LUTs, which you can choose any LUT you want. It doesn't have to be like this dark monochrome. It could be anything if you wanna make it bright and warm. There's tons of LUTs for that. If you wanna make cool tones, Tons of LUTs for that and they're all over the internet as well. So there you have it guys. Like I know that this is somewhat basic level. I could do a really deep dive in this stuff if you guys want. Let me know if you want an even further Final Cut tutorial moving forward. Um, I love color grading, I love editing, this is my jam. So if you guys are interested in this, let me know and I'd like to make more for you. And I really do hope that you guys have found it helpful, that you've learned a little bit of something. If you have any questions, please post them below and I'll do my best to get back to you or make an, any additional videos using Final Cut Pro. And again, the concepts I hope will translate over to Premiere or any of the editors that you're using. Um, if you guys did find this helpful, please hit that like button. It helps the channel out so much. As well, consider subscribing for me because I'm loving making content like this for you guys. And do come check me out on Instagram as well at the Car Creative and hit me up in the DMs. I love chatting with you guys over there as well. So again, thanks so much for watching this and I hope that this video finds you well and safe and we will see you in the next one. Peace.